What's up guys, T-Max here, and today I'm going to show you how to cut out the background from a picture in Photoshop CC 2015, like so. Now there are a lot of ways to go in about this, but the first step is obviously to buy Photoshop, or steal it, but I'm not telling you to do that. The second step is to import your picture into Photoshop. You won't have this, but this is a group that I made that is essentially this picture that you see already touched up. Once you have your picture imported into Photoshop, let's go ahead and copy it. To do that, hold down the Alt button or Option for Mac users, click and drag on the picture down here and just kind of move it down and then release. That's a really easy way to copy the picture. So now anything we do to the original, doesn't necessarily destroy it because we have a spare. Go ahead and move over to this eye and click it to hide the copy. Now, just to kind of show how good of a job we do cutting out your background, let's create just a black layer, like a black backdrop. Go to this symbol down here. It's like a circle, half filled, half not. Click, go to solid color. And then here where you get to pick the color, drag it all the way to black and say, Okie dokie. In the layers section, click and drag and bring it to the bottom. It disappears and that's okay because if you were to hide the original, bam, there it is. Turn your original back on and let's get to work. Now there are more than a few ways to go about this. First, select the layer you're going to be working with. Then press E to select the eraser tool or come over here on the left side where your tools are and click where it says eraser tool. You can also right click any of these icons to bring up more options. What you can do now is hold down control or command as well as spacebar and as you click and drag it allows you to zoom in and out in and out. You can then use the brackets to adjust the size of your eraser. The brackets are those little weird symbols that are above your inner key and you just go in and you literally erase around your subject. Do you like my work? I know you do. This is ridiculous. Don't do this unless you just feel like wasting your time. The eraser is only good for one thing, erasing mistakes, not backgrounds. Let's say you created a new layer and you added a mustache. Oh, that mustache is quite too long. Let's use the eraser and ah, much better. That is the only good time to use an eraser. Let's go on to the next tool. This is going to be the lasso tool. You can press L or you can come all the way up here and choose it. Remember to right click if you want these options to come up. We're going to start off with the lasso tool, which is the standard. Say I just wanted to take my head out of the background. This is a click and drag draw tool. You just start and then you literally just kind of draw around your subject. Here I go, going around my ear. When you get all the way back, you let go and there's your selection. A selection is essentially saying whatever is on the inside, I want to keep. Everything on the outside, remove. You know you have a successful selection when you see these marching ants. Now to make the cut, come all the way down to the bottom right where you see a square with a circle in it and it says add layer mask. When you click this, it will keep what's inside the selection and get rid of the rest. Let's do that. Amazing. Now this selection looks like crap, and it should, because this is a very hard tool to accurately use. If you look in the layer panel, you see that the picture now has a picture with black and white. If you hold down Alt and you click that, that shows you your layer mask. It is in the vague shape of a human head. That is not what we're going for. Alt click the layer mask again, and it shows you the final product. If you were to hold shift and click the layer mask, it would not delete it, but it would just hide it. Shift click again and it reveals the layer mask. Think of it this way. What if I'm wearing a mask and it's only showing my eyes? I go down and I create the mask. What do you see? My eyes. Just like a mask, certain parts of a person's face are hidden and others are exposed. That's a free analogy. You're welcome. It's not a very accurate tool. But Lasso has two other modes to choose from. Go over to Lasso, right click, and there's Polygonal Lasso Tool. Go ahead and select it. 
Now the original lasso tool was a click and drag to kind of draw, and it wasn't very accurate. The polygonal is a click click kind of function. Let's start with the chin and work our way up. Click, 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 click. And you essentially work your way all the way around your subject. It's best to zoom in and do all this meticulous clicking. If you happen to mess up, such as that, you press delete and it starts working back the points. When you get to the end, it will produce the marching ants again. Now you know you have a selection and this is much more accurate than the standard lasso tool. Let's see how accurate by creating the layer mask. Yeah, that looks a lot better, but not really good at all. There are a couple of ways to kind of touch this up. The first way is to select the layer mask, then press B to select a brush, come up into the top left and make sure that you have selected a very round brush and you have decreased the hardness. If the hardness is all the way at 100%, it will look like this, like you've been cut out of a newspaper. If the hardness is down, it is a soft transition from your subject to your not subject. Notice how I have hair and then there's my green screen. And you can just click and just kind of work it in like that. Now doing this on a large scale is very meticulous, almost as bad as just erasing everything. That is one way to do it. In a minute, I will show you how to really touch it up in a really neat way. First, let me show you the magnetic lasso tool. This is kind of like a smart polygonal lasso tool. As you click and drag, it actually kind of does some of the work on its own. I am just clicking and dragging and it's kind of determining, hey, I'm encircling a human head. And done. Oh, what the frick are you doing? And so this goes to show one thing that can happen with the magnetic lasso tool. It's thinking on its own so it doesn't know when to stop. So you have to press the lead all the way back, press enter, and then there's your selection. Let's see how it looks. Still looks like crap. So the moral of this story so far is that the eraser tool is ridiculous and that while the lasso tools are somewhat functional, the final selection needs a lot of touching up. Now let's move on to the tool that I personally prefer and pretty much always use. We come up here and it is the quick selection tool. As you can see, the hotkey to select it is W. This is really cool. This is a click and drag smart tool. I'm gonna start from the top of my head and move on down. Did you see that? Was that not awesome? It determines by color and shape and consistency but it didn't get my shirt. So I'm just gonna click and drag and holy crap, it picked the rest of my shirt. But it also chose my chair. So to unselect from your selection, hold down Alt or the Option key and then do some more clicking and a dragon. Look at that, it unselected the chair. Very nice. It looks like we have a little more chair to unselect right here. Hold down Alt, do some more clicking and a dragon. Right over here, it missed my collar. Just click and drag. And up top, it missed a little bit of my beautiful, beautiful hair. Amazing. Just looking at it, I can tell it's pretty accurate. Let's put it to the test and let's use the add layer mask. Pretty dang good, but no cigar. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to touch up the borders of your layer mask. Come over to the layer mask and double click it. If you're going to get a few options. Let's just skip these and go to mask edge. This is where we're gonna to go to refine that border. Go ahead and click, and it brings up an option list for refining the mask. I'm gonna show you what typically works for me. If you just click on one of these and you click and drag, it's gonna move pretty fast. But if you hold down Alt and click and drag, it goes up a little slower. So let's change radius to 0.2, smooth to two, and then shift edge to negative two and maybe contrast it too. Okay, that's usually what I work with, but it still needs a little touching up. One of the biggest problems is hair. There are thousands of very thin strands that are hard to be captured. Now this is very important. 
The larger the picture, the better the resolution, the better Photoshop can recognize what is subject, what is background, what is hair, what is not. This is probably a 12 megapixel picture. So when I go into my eye and I zoom in, I can go really, really far before it even starts to get pixelated. That's how you know you got a high resolution picture and what's gonna help Photoshop determine what it can separate. Double clicking the layer mask, going to mask edge, and then now clicking here, this will help us tell Photoshop, hey, you left out some stuff. Here's a little hair, there's some strands right there. Let's see how well it captures it. Okay, look at that. Very cool. Up close, this looks a little weird. Come all the way back and it looks okay. So work your way around your picture in any trouble spots and then click OK and then there's your selection. But oh no, it captured something I didn't want it to. What to do? Click your layer mask, press B to bring up your brush, press D to reset these two selected colors to the original white and black. Now when you have your layer mask selected, remember that white and black are not colors, they are levels of hiding and revealing. If it is white, it will completely reveal the picture. To switch from white to black, easily press X, and then now it goes from revealing to hiding. So this one little strand can now be easily erased. Same here. And oh look, it left out a little bit of my sideburn. So instead of choosing black, choose white, and we can kind of work our way out just a little bit until we see the green screen. Choosing black, we can now work our way back in. Decrease the size of your brush, and now you can make more fine adjustments. When you're done, you have now removed your subject from its background. Feel free to bring up the copy, and that actually has you and the background still together. Notice how I'm very sharp, my background is very blurred. I made this selection, then brought up the copy behind it, and blurred the copy. If I click the copy, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, wow, looky there. I'm just going to say OK and let that be. If I take this layer down, you will see, oh wow, everything is blurred. Bring the selection back up and bam. And that is how I accomplished having this slightly blurred background to focus on me, the subject. Now there are a lot of other ways to cut out the background of a picture. That's just how I like to do it. Maybe you can mess around and find a way that you like to do it. But I think that's enough for one video. If you're interested in my other tutorials, I do have a tutorial playlist. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more. And until next time, T-Max out.